Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kini Coach YouTube channel. I am naturopath Fiona Chin, co founder of Kygenesis and the Kidney Coach, and co author of Kidney Disease Solution. And I'm joined today by the beautiful Emily Carhill. Emily is a registered nurse. She works in a large cardiovascular slash neurological ward here in Melbourne, Australia. Emily is also a fully qualified naturopath. She works alongside me at the Wellness Guru. And she has a special interest in oncology, all things kidney, and now all things autoimmune. So welcome, Em. She's a wealth of knowledge. Emily also, um, if you've ever emailed us at support at kidneycoach.com, you'll either get an email back from the beautiful Rachel, who's another qualified naturopath who works on our team, or Emily. And Emily answers all your Facebook posts and she writes half our articles that are on the Kidney Coach website. So she's a valuable part of our team. So thanks again for joining me today, Emily. Thanks for and having me. I think, no worries. And I think today we're talking about the amazing vitamin that is vitamin E, right? Mm. It's going to hand it across. And it's over. Um, <laughs> so vitamin E, I feel like, doesn't get um, the attention that it deserves. It um, yeah, but it's so basically it's the fat soluble vitamin. It's something that our body can't make itself. So it's something that we need to get from either food or supplemental sources. Generally, you'll find it in food, in uh, vegetable oils, um, nuts and seeds, um, barley, wheat germ. And then obviously we can take it as a supplement as well. The thing about vitamin E that probably isn't I guess widely understood is that it's not just one molecule so vitamin E is actually made up of eight different what are called isomers um, so we've got four tocopherols and we've got four tocotrienols but what you'll find if you are supplementing generally with vitamin E is that you're supplementing with alpha tocopherol and the reason for that really is because that was the first form of vitamin E that they discovered. So that was discovered back in the 1920s. It is the form of vitamin E that is the most abundant in our body tissues. Um, and so then they obviously started doing a whole lot of research using alpha tocopherol. But then I think it was around the 1960s that they actually found um, that vitamin E also contains tocotrienols. Um, and they then started to have started to be researched. So there's not as much research on the tocotrienols as the tocopherols, which is why most supplements will just contain alpha tocopherol. But what we're seeing into the research with vitamin E is that you are better off, if you can, um, taking a supplement that has both the tocopherols and tocotrienols, or at least taking a supplement that contains all of the tocopherols. Um, so the four isomers of the alpha of the vitamin E tocopherols. Um, so yeah, you know. no, no, keep going. No, keep going. I was just going to talk about um, some of the actions of vitamin E. So why would we use it as a supplement? Mm -hmm. um, so vitamin E is a really strong antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Um, they're probably two of its primary actions and primary reasons why it's beneficial for the body. Um, it's protective uh, being an antioxidant. It protects our DNA from damage. It's been shown to be protective against cancer, um, protects our nerves, and then also is really protective of our cardiovascular system. So it's got um, the ability to lower cholesterol um, and also probably more importantly, prevent our cholesterol molecules from becoming oxidized, which um, mm -hmm. is when which is actually why cholesterol becomes problematic in the body. It's not cholesterol per se, it's oxidized cholesterol. Um, and it reduces blood pressure, it helps the immune system, and it also um, inhibits our platelets from clumping together and um, becoming sticky, which then can um, form a clot in our blood vessels, heart, um, and obviously lead to things like stroke and heart attacks. Um, so they're probably its primary actions and because of, I guess, its particular um, benefits from um, the cardiovascular system, a lot of the research in vitamin E is into vitamin E cardiovascular disease. Mm. Um, so there's many, many studies that show its protective effect and that's really important, um, obviously, for people with kidney disease. We know that 
Um, people with kidney disease are far more likely to actually die from cardiovascular disease than they are to die from their kidney disease um, because it does increase the risk dramatically of cardiovascular disease. Um, so vitamin E is really um, protective from that point of view. And is it both, is there a difference between, you know, like you said, the different forms of vitamin E is, have they researched to show that is one better at doing the antioxidant versus the anti-inflammatory, um, you know, cause you were saying you need to take both. Is there, yeah. do they have stronger actions in each one? Or like if you had diabetes, would you go for one type of vitamin E versus if you had cardiovascular disease? Yeah, so they are starting to look at that um, a bit more specifically, but what they seem to be, have found so far is that it's actually the tocotrienols that are more highly antioxidant than the tocopherols, mm -hmm. um, which is different from what was they always thought, as it was always yeah. sort of perceived as alpha tocopherol was the antioxidant. Mm -hmm. um, but it actually seems to be the tocotrienols. So in terms of um, wanting to benefit antioxidants, uh, yeah, wanting antioxidant benefits, the tocotrienols seem to be better. They also seem to be better in terms of cancer, um, so cancer prevention. And also um, for people um, with cancer and um, and the liver, they, that seems to be what the research is showing, showing so far. Um, then in terms of, and actually also uh, for cholesterol as well. So one of the things that they've found a difference between tocopherols to tocotrienols is that tocotrienols can actually lower cholesterol levels as well as preventing oxidation of cholesterol. Whereas mm -hmm. alpha tocopherols, yes, they can prevent that oxidation, um, but they don't have seem to have any beneficial effect on um, lowering levels of LDL or increasing a, um, HDL or lowering triglycerides. It's the tocotrienols that have that benefit. Yeah, right. Okay. Great. Okay. Keep going. Sorry. I just, I was curious. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, very protective for cardiovascular health. Um, and then also for diabetes as well. So obviously one of the, uh, the problems with diabetes and the damage that it can cause to the kidneys or to the nerves or to the eyes or is because of um, high levels of oxidative stress. So using vitamin E um, seems to be able to prevent some of that from happening. And um, it's, they've done studies using vitamin E in people with diabetes in showing that it can help with um, reducing the development of, of kidney disease, um, reducing the progression of kidney disease. Um, and one of the other really great things that it seems to do is reduce fibrosis, so renal fibrosis. Um, and that's when we start to, because of inflammation and oxidative stress and, um, and damage in the kidneys, the uh, kidneys start to get scarred. And so mm. obviously scar tissue um, then prevents the kidneys from working properly. Um, but vitamin E seems to be able to reduce that, that fibrosis or that scarring um, in kidney disease and it lowers certain uh signaling molecules that we know are upregulated in that process so transforming growth factor beta particularly is um, running at a higher level when there's kidney scarring going on um, so it can also help to prevent that too yeah amazing well that's super important because as we know it's the scarring that really it's what will decline kidney function super quick as soon as those you know scar tissues and you're not detoxing and moving you know the urine through as, as you should be in filtering so that seems to be a no-brainer then really so that being the case would you almost put everybody on vitamin e as a protective when people are maybe sort of stage three or something like that or yeah i mean i think looking at definitely some sort of anti-inflammatory antioxidant whether it be vitamin e or whether um, you're using something else definitely um and particularly if it is someone who either has known cardiovascular disease, has risk factors for cardiovascular disease, um, then vitamin E would probably be a really good option there because we're helping to obviously prevent um, and, you know, further development of that as well as looking after the kidneys at the same time. And vitamin E deficiency, is that something that's common? Uh, 
outright deficiency in vitamin E isn't common. Um, generally, that only really occurs in people who have like fat malabsorption disorders so that they're not able to, they're not absorbing their fats properly. But mm -hmm. in insufficiency, so not getting enough vitamin E is super common. So um, I think, you know, most of what I read, they say about 90% of um, people in the USA, which, you know, I'm sure we could extrapolate over to Australia as well, don't meet uh, the daily dietary recommendations for vitamin E. So they're not getting... Um, as much vitamin E as they should from their diet. So therefore they are, they have insufficient levels as opposed to like a full on deficiency. So what sort of dosage would you be using with vitamin E then? And, you know, the, you know, the form, like we know with the tocotrienols and the, um, to, 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 I can never say the other one, the other one, tocotrienols, you know, most supplements don't have both in them. It's my, like, unless we've got some of our good practice only ones, but I know even yeah. our good practice only ones don't really have both of them in there. So what sort of dosages should we look for a supplement with both forms in there? Where do, what do we do with that? Yeah. So yeah, you're right. There's not many, there's I think three practitioner only brands in Australia that have now have, Mm. Um, a blend of both and I think because of the research we are going to start seeing um, that being more common so you will I think it will start to get easier and easier to um, to get a blend of both some companies do do it there are some companies on iHerb who do do it not many um, so if you are unable to source a blend of all eight isomers then I would be looking for a blend of all of the tocopherols that's a little bit easier to find um, mm -hmm. rather than just a straight alpha tocopherol on its own. Do you have any brands off the top of your head on iHerb that you'd recommend? Um, Life Extension has um, the tocotrienols as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also, there are, because some uh, there's been quite a bit of research um, on, uh, I think it's gamma tocotrienol. Gamma, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so there are companies where um, you can get that as a straight um, mm -hmm. supplement that's been researched quite a bit in oncology. Um, so there are a number of studies where it's showing that it's the gamma tocotrienol that seems to have the beneficial effects. Um, so I guess, you know, that's, an, uh, that's another option is take a tocopherol mix and a tocotrienol mix. Um, it gets a little bit tricky because it, there, it does need to be the levels of each of them need to be in certain levels. Otherwise the absorption affects, like if we have too much tocopherol in a blend, it's going to affect the absorption of the tocotrienols. So it, it starts to get a little bit tricky. Um, but I would say, yeah, if you can't get the tocotrienols, then get the blend of tocopherols. That's going to be your probably your next best um, supplement to find. Then my next question is, um, food as a source of vitamin E obviously nature gets it right because she gets the balances of them naturally occurring where they don't compete for absorption things like that so yeah. if someone was like well vitamin E sounds amazing for me can I just get it through eating more nuts and using wheat germ oil and taking things like buckthorn or something like that would that be a a viable option or is it you have to eat so much of it that we really need to supplement I think if you're wanting it for therapeutic effects, like what we're speaking about here, then you would need to supplement. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult to get enough um, through the diet because even though we do have foods that contain vitamin E, we don't have any foods that are high, like, you know, like you can't, yeah, nothing that's sort of high enough really that you're going to get that um, therapeutic dose. And what about synthetic versus natural? Because that's something that we see a lot of, yeah. um, you know, like, you know, so many companies are doing synthetic vitamin E. And I, I remember studies being um, an issue with synthetic vitamin E, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Um, there have been some studies um, with vitamin E that have actually shown negative effects on health. Mm -hmm. um, but they... Uh, earlier studies most of the earlier studies were using synthetic vitamin e so yeah there's there's two different forms you can get in supplemental form so there's a synthetic form and then there's a natural form um, we absolutely want to get the natural form um, so to know on your supplement which is which um, the natural form will have a d in front of so it'll be say d alpha tocopherol 
and mm -hmm. their synthetic form will have a DL. So you don't want the DL um, because apart from the fact that, yes, there are studies that showing that it could have potential negative effects, but also it's not as well absorbed. So it's about 50% less absorbed um, by the body as well. Great. So the, just to reiterate, make sure it's got a D in it, not a DL. DL, no good, D good. And dosage, what sort of dosage should people be taking? Yeah, so depending on what I'm using it for, I probably am looking for around 400 milligrams a day yeah. um, for most people, sometimes higher depending on, as I said, um, you know, if I people who have known renal fibrosis and um, more advanced kidney disease or cardiovascular disease, but I'd say around 400 milligrams is probably um, what you'd be looking at. And does it have any drug interactions? Is there any time you shouldn't take vitamin E? Yes. Um, so vitamin E, because it has an effect on platelet aggregation um, and platelet adhesion can potentially increase um, the risk of bleeding when it's given alongside blood thinning medication. Um, so things like Wolfram, um, the Pixban, Zeralto, anything like that. So I would um, avoid using them in those circumstances unless you were using them under medical supervision. Um, and the other thing is as well, because of that potential slight reduction in blood clotting um, action that people who have a history of having had a hemorrhagic stroke, um, so not a stroke from a blood clot, but a stroke from a bleed, they also shouldn't take vitamin E, um, obviously, unless it's under um, medical supervision, it's been recommended. Perfect. Okay. Anything else you want to say about the amazing vitamin E? Um, no, just, I guess, into, um, when looking at supplements, you want to get, uh, and I think most of them are, um, vitamin E in a lipid base. So it's fat soluble. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so as right. opposed to having a tablet, um, mm -hmm. then you want to get it in a lipid base because that's just going to improve, uh, the absorption of it from the gut. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to say. So don't get vitamin E's in capsules or tablets. Or capsules are okay as long as it's a gel cap. Yeah, yeah. so normally put it in some flour or wheat germ base. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right, so you've been, you've got all things vitamin E there. So remember the D, not the DL, and um, making sure you get a blend if you can. Um, yeah, life extensions, I don't even think Thorn does it. I think maybe Solda has a good vitamin E as well. They don't? Mm -hmm. No, sorry, Thorn, yeah. They've only got the tocopherols. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I think Solgar has a mix as well. I think that's mm -hmm. the one I tend to use. Um, or if you can get a hold of a good naturopath and they can get you um, a good practitioner on your brand. But yeah, there's only, like you say, there's three here in Australia that do it. So it's not a really super popular thing. So perfect. All right, Emily, thank you. So if you'd like this information, make sure you give us a like and a thumbs up. Um, if you want to hear more about um, any new um, videos that we put out, if you hit subscribe, you'll get notified anytime we put out new content. If you want to know more about what we do, you can head over to www.kidneycoach.com and there you'll find um, all the information about the supplements that we've made for specifically for kidney disease that are based off the program, you, um, the Kidney Disease Solution, which was written by Duncan and myself. And if you need to reach out to us, you can hit us up at support at kidneycoach.com and either the beautiful Emily or Rachel, our other fully qualified naturopath, will get back to you. Um, you can also go and find us on Facebook. We're just www.facebook.com forward slash kidney coach. And we, we post on there every day. You can be part of our community and we'd love to see you on there. So hopefully you found this useful and we look forward to seeing you next time. And thank you for being part of our community. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Emily, for all your information too. Bye. <laughs> Bye.